This is the much-awaited phase one study of Moderna's uh, COVID-19 vaccine program. Uh, This is the full results being published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This was a study of 45 healthy people between ages 18 and 55. uh, And what they showed are that the neutralizing antibodies the vaccine generated, uh, they generated that in all of the participants. And the dose level that they're taking forward into phase three, that's the 100 microgram dose, uh, they found that these neutralizing antibodies antibodies were at levels about two to four times higher what you would see in patients who've recovered from the disease. Neutralizing antibodies are so important because those are the antibodies that actually block the virus from being able to infect cells. Now, it's important to put this into context. We have seen data from Pfizer and BioNTech, which is the same technology going after COVID-19 with a vaccine as well. And this is fairly similar. Pfizer and BioNTech saw about two to three times higher neutralizing antibody levels. Uh, We talked with Moderna's chief medical officer just before uh, coming on with you. And um, he said that the results um, are about similar between the two vaccines. And he was encouraged by the Pfizer data and he's encouraged by the Moderna data. Of course, the question is going to become how long does this protection last? Uh, And we just don't know that. These uh, results were as of day 57. So they are going to start a phase three trial on July 27th of 30,000 participants. And that will give us the answer about how protective uh, this looks to be, Mel. Um, Meg, these are the full results of a study that had been sort of, um, I don't want to say alluded to, but summarized, high level summary of the data. And this is the full results. Yeah, that's really good context. So on May 18th, Moderna's stock went crazy up about 20 percent as it result. It it basically um, put out the top line results uh, and we didn't have any of the details. So critics argued it was very difficult to tell what we actually saw. Um, They only had data on eight of uh, the 45 patients worth of neutralizing antibodies. So this is the full 45 and it has uh, fuller results on Uh, all of that, and also on safety. And they did see, you know, some fever, some fatigue, some muscle pain um, in the trial, but nothing they said that would stop them from continuing and certainly nothing at that 100 microgram dose. All right. Meg, thank you for that. Meg Terrell with the latest on Moderna. Again, the stock is popping in the after hour session on the back of these full phase one data up by 6%. Let's go straight to an analyst here for some more context on this and what it means for Moderna. Michael Yee, Managing Director at Jefferies, joined us. Uh, Michael, great to have you with us. Thanks for hopping on the phone. Um, how significant is this? Hey, Melissa, great to be here. Uh, look, I think the real key important takeaway for investors is This should further increase confidence that we are getting a robust immune response and that there should be greater confidence that this will be protective uh, to a degree uh, in transmission of COVID. So uh, this is all along our positive thesis and our view that both Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech are definitely on a good track to get a vaccine by the end of the year. So the full readout of this data in, in these 45 individuals, and it seems staggering to me that, that all of the individuals produce neutralizing antibodies at this level of two to four times those who, who actually recovered from the virus. Um, does this prove further that, that the same technology that, that Pfizer and BioNTech are working on uh, may be even more valid? Absolutely. You know, there was a lot of skepticism both on the platform when this data first came out from Moderna couple of months ago, and of course, they didn't result, uh, didn't report the full results, so there was definitely a lot of debate and controversy, as you recall. Uh, BioNTech, Pfizer coming out with their data, which was very good. BioNTech traded up a lot on this, and we're validating that now with full published data of the details, which looks as good, if not slightly better, than Pfizer-BioNTech's data. So we should feel good that these two platforms are looking very good, and there is more data to come, of course, from other vaccines, so I would uh, remind others about that as well. Does it look like this mRNA-based vaccine is going to cross the finish line in your view? And I know that's early, but things are, are being expedited these days in terms yeah. of concurrence f- phases being conducted. Well, look, our confidence remains high. We initiated coverage, of course, on Monday morning uh, on this and ahead of this news. And we do remain confident that both Operation Warp Speed and this data, of course, uh, is going to support a vaccine that is effective and that meets the threshold for FDA and for the government to push this forward. Uh, Obviously, there will be other ones as well coming through, uh, but it validates both an MRI platform so far, right, 
in these patients. And of course, when we get the phase three data, it's going to be thousands and thousands of patients, Melissa. So we should have a little more confidence after they do that. Is, that, Moderna, uh, is, is Moderna a buy? Moderna is a buy. We have a, a, a buy on a price target of 90. And we do think it's going to trade up into more of this and more data to come. Yep. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Great to be here. Thanks. Michael Yee of Jefferies. And we are seeing Moderna shares jump 10 percent. Dan Nathan, you know, there was a lot of criticism when they first offered these top line results. But here they are, the full result, results, and they are as good as people had hoped. Yeah, so here we are a couple months later from that time period. The stock had been very volatile. It ran up to that period in May and obviously um, had a huge spike in reversal. I think it's interesting to note that, you know, as of today's close, prior to this data coming out, the options market was implying about a 28% move between now and about a month from now. So it was just showing you the level of anxiety that investors or traders had um, about this data. And I think that's probably dating back to May 18th. It's worth noting, though, you, you kind of linked the data that we saw with the Pfizer drug. I mean, listen, I, I think that investors are getting um, a little bit more comfortable about the fact that we are going to have multiple vaccines available at some point in the future. I, I'm just not certain if you want to extrapolate this to what this means. Did the market rally into the close today because this data was leaked or in anticipation of good data? I just don't see tens and tens of millions of Americans taking a fast track vaccine um, you know, it, that's done within six months for something that they just don't know what's gonna happen, especially when we have tens of millions of Americans who won't wear a mask to avoid the spread of the disease. So to me, I just think it's like a little too soon to be extrapolating what this sort of phase one data on 45 patients means right now for our fight against the virus. Bono, in your take? You know, uh, you know, a guy talked about the VIX and to borrow an analogy from him yesterday, he mentioned horse racing and not necessarily knowing which one's going to come out in f on front. I think it's positive for the overall market that we have a ton of players now pushing forward, racing for a vaccine. Who is going to come out ahead? We don't know, but I think it's overall um, a positive thing for the market. Absolutely. Carter Braxton Worth, how do these charts look? Well, talk about Moderna. What's interesting, of course, it, it, as Meg referred, it had that spike with the sort of pre-news, May 18th, up as high as 87. And here we have the official news, if you will, or the validated news. And yes, it's up in the night market here, but it's not even as high as it was on May 18th. So here we are, essentially two months later, the data is in, and yet the traders are right now not even pushing it higher than where it was um, on the 18th of May when the first news broke. But biotech in general, actually, I think we have a chart here. This is a great area of the market. Um, uptrends are fantastic, but when uptrends get too ahead of themselves, what gives them the next lag is if they pause. Now take a look at this chart of the IBB if we have it. From the lows of 09, basically IBB and the QQQ are even money. And yet QQQ is very stretched. The IBB spent the past four years consolidating and is just now breaking out. I mean, I think biotech as a theme, independent of which one, but in aggregate through an ETF like IBB is something that every portfolio should have. Guy, your quick thoughts as we watch Moderna up 11%. Yeah, first of all, it's amazing you got that analyst on because he initiated yesterday, I think, to your point, with a $90 price target. That's a great call by him. He should be proud of himself. And right now at 84, it looks like he's to be spot on. I think 88 was the prior high. Um, I think you, if you've been long this stock, you might be able to ride it up to 90 without question. But to Carter's point, the way to play this entire space and something we've said now for months, if not the last year, continues to be IBB. Yeah, and we're watching actually 10% was an understatement. We're, we're edging up towards 15 right now uh, in the uh, post-market session. So we'll continue to watch that shares of Moderna again about 15%.